Hi, welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee. You're going to hear me walking. I actually get to be outside. It is gorgeous. It's like 68 degrees and it's overcast, so it's like perfect. Not too hot. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh. So I'm thinking about so many things. Oh my gosh, I have all the feels, all the feels. You know, when you go through something really profound, life-changing, like being at the bedside of someone when they take their last breath. Yes, as a follow-up to my previous Sunday morning coffee podcast. I was with my grandma in hospice. She was 98, lived a very full, full, robust life, very strong woman. And I was by her bedside for four days. And the fourth night into the next morning, um, I was there overnight and I was right there when she left the earth. And I consider that very much a blessing and a privilege to have been in that space with her, holding that space with her. So on the heels of that, I'm out for a walk and I'm, oh, I, I did sleep a little bit this morning, okay? Um, and trying to get my body back into a self-care mode now. Today is like amplified self-care. I'm sure you can relate to this, right? And I'm just walking. Slept a lot, now I'm walking and Oh, I'm just feeling so many things. So much perspective is coming through right now about love and about life and about living. Love, life, and living. Love. So there are so many different variations of love, isn't, isn't there? And there's definitely this feeling, for me at least up to this point in my life, about the imbalance of love. When love is unbalanced, where someone loves you more than you love them, or you love someone more than they love you. And you know, the, the whole relationship thing. And there's so many videos on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and YouTube about this, right? About how you can't make somebody love you. And sometimes people just stop loving you. Like, how does that happen? Like, I can't even imagine this woman who's 98 years old is leaving this planet 15 years after her husband, her love of her life, they met way back in the olden days at a dance hall and fell in love. And three weeks later, they got married and had a full life and were actually happy people together. They were best friends, side by side, companions, confidants, and loves. In fact, beside my grandma's bed was a beautiful, very personal love letter from my grandfather that he wrote to her on one of their anniversaries. And reading it brings you to tears because there's such heartfelt, deep, deep and profound love for her. And I knew it because I witnessed it. I actually lived with them for a while when I was in college. I'd come home from the summers and work and I'd live with them and spent a lot of time with my grandparents, especially later on in my life. And So I was also at my grandpa's bedside when he took his last breaths. And then now his beloved with her, sending her off to him. And having this experience really gives me all the feels about love. Like, is there that kind of love? Does that actually exist anymore? Is that real anymore? Is that just a fantasy? Is that like the Disney princess movies, you know? And I think the answer to that is yes. It exists inside of us. And if we choose to partner with someone else and go into the depths of what is possible for us, the expanded depths of love, I believe we can build a web of love in a relationship that is a grid of support, of confidence, of strength, of integrity, of authenticity and alignment. It doesn't mean we have to be the same and our grids have to look the same. It means we overlap and we weave in the support we reflect to each other we help each other grow and expand and we support one another on this walk through life through the difficulties the hardships the challenges but also through the joys and the triumphs and that is the person that you most want to share all the good ideas you have with all the great inspired quotes you find that's the person you want to read poetry for and you want to write poetry about this kind of love is the kind of love I want I want it I want it. And when I feel into this, it makes me feel sad. (laughs) It makes me feel sad because I know that in this beautiful lifetime that I've been gifted 50 years of living, I've had two marriages, I've had a few loves, 
And just maybe, just maybe, I may have already had the love of my life. And if that's the case, I'll have to live out the rest of my days knowing that I've had that. And maybe I wasn't present enough for it, or maybe I wanted it too much, or maybe it just wasn't a fit. Maybe it was unbalanced. I can tell you one thing is that I really don't know what the future holds, even though, yeah, I'm a psychic, right? I'm supposed to know this. I don't know how things will unfold for me. I know that I, I will not and cannot settle for less than this beautiful love that I saw and felt and knew from my grandparents. Do I think it's possible? Hell yes, I think it's possible. I know it is. But is the timing right for me? Is it possible for me? Has it already happened? I don't know. I really... I don't know. And maybe with the death of someone that has had such a profound love in their lives, maybe that is the trigger for me to release my fears and doubts and and to open up to what is more more important to me. And what is that? Life lived? Is it really truly lived if you're not sharing it? It seems so unfair to speculate on the future especially given this time, this deeply emotional time. But this is when change happens. This is when we have the opportunity to truly reflect and feel in deeper, to really feel into our true selves and what we want. I don't want this to be a sad audio. I want this to be a reflective audio and really truly sharing perspective because I am asking these deeper, profound questions. And that is exactly what happens when you're brought to the edge of life and death. You question things, you should. And you should change things. You should change things. So my question for you is, what will you change? Given the renewed perspective that you've received either through this podcast this morning, through my sharing my story about my grandmother's passing, or through your own personal life experiences that you've had, you know, because you felt into these profound moments where you get such a depth of perspective. You can't not do something with it. So what will you change? And maybe a better question would be, what would you change if you could, if you really felt like you had the freedom to change and literally do anything? How would you change? What would you change? What would be different for you now after this, after having gained this knowledge and wisdom, this profound wisdom about life, lived, knowing that this is your chance, this is your time, your time is now, right now. What will you change? Thank you for listening, as always. I so enjoy the podcast with you, the Sunday morning coffee on Above Life channel. I hope that I've inspired your spirit, filled you with some hope, some perspective today, and encouraged you, as always, to live your life. This is your life, after all. Nobody's going to live it for you. Nobody makes those choices for you. You do. It's on you. So just live it for you live it. Thanks for listening.